Hi, how you doing? Justin here, and in this video I'm going to be discussing what accessories a beginner needs before they start their guitar journey. Now, if you want specific product information, you want to pop over onto the website, and there'll be a bunch of links uh, within each category over there. So the first thing that you definitely want to make sure you've got plenty of is guitar picks, okay? The Sock Monster will nick loads of them. You'll go through them much faster than you probably anticipate, so don't buy one. You want to buy like six probably is a good starting amount, and you want a very, very thin pick, okay? I play with a very thick pick, but for beginners you want to start very, very, very thin. Thin as you can. Thinnest pick that they got in your local store is what you want, okay? I tend to recommend these kind of nylon ones, and this one's 0.46, I think, so less than half a millimeter thick, okay? And it's absolutely, you can bend it in half, right? It's really, really flexible. And what it means is if you accidentally play a little bit too hard, the pick will just kind of bend a little more. It won't kind of dig and get stuck into the strings. So definitely getting a very, very thin pick, a few very, very thin picks is the way to go. While you're at the store, might be worth getting a little pack of a few different picks as well. So you get a very thin one, slightly thicker, slightly thicker, slightly thicker, up to about a mil, so that as you progress and when you start playing scales and stuff, like that you definitely want to be playing with a thicker pick not super thick but a thicker pick right. the second must-have accessory for beginner guitar players is a guitar tuner it is possible to tune your guitar without a tuner tuning it to itself but Really, getting a tuner is just such a great thing. It'll, it'll mean that your playing experience is better because your guitar will be in tune, like properly in tune all the time. It would be better for everyone else that has to listen to you. Um, and these days, tuners are not expensive. Um, my first recommendation would be to get a clip-on tuner, okay? You've probably seen or may have noticed on the headstock of my guitar, uh, I have a clip-on tuner there pretty much all the time. Um, they're really convenient, accurate, easy to use. They just pick the vibrations in the guitar neck to tell you the tuning. You don't have to plug anything in, or it's not, it's not at all complicated, right? Very simple to use. They go from being relatively cheap, you know, probably 10, 15 quid for a basic one, right up to 40 or 50 quid if you get the more fancy, accurate ones with strobe tuning and stuff like that, which is not really necessary for a beginner, but you might want that sort of thing later on so um, you know sometimes buy cheap buy twice applies for stuff like tuners um, so you know I'll have a couple of recommended ones over on the website so you might want to go and check those out but uh, yeah a clip-on tuner if you for some reason don't like a clip-on you can buy like a standalone tuner or a pedal tuner but those ones you have to either kind of rest them on your knee to try and use the microphone in them or plug your guitar in it's a little bit more hassle I think the the clip-on thing is by far the best way to, to tune up but you can also use apps and there's a, a free one in the Justin guitar uh, song beginner song course app has a tuner built in there are other tuning apps that you can use as well of course it's using your phone is pretty simple it's with you all the time which is an advantage but rarely as accurate as the the clip-on uh, variety so that is what i would recommend that you start off with the third thing on the beginner shopping list is spare strings, and I think you want to have at least two sets, okay? Just in case you're putting one on and it pops or you tune it up too tight and it breaks or whatever, you know, you want to have at least two sets in spare, probably the same gauge at least, so the same thickness. Uh, I do recommend that beginners use thin strings, okay? So for acoustic guitar, that would be an 11 gauge, and for an electric guitar, that would be either a nine or a 10 gauge set of strings. Uh, there'll be links again over on the website if you want more specific stuff. Uh, one thing that you might want to consider is using coated strings. Uh, so these are like regular electric guitar strings or acoustic guitar strings that have a coating on the string, kind of like a Teflon-y kind of thing, which stops sweat and other stuff kind of absorbing and rusting into the string. Uh, they don't generally sound quite as bright, but they do last a lot longer. So you might want to consider using coated strings if you're a beginner. Thing number four on the beginner shopping list is a guitar strap. Now, I don't practice with a strap most of the time. I tend to use straps only when I'm playing live and I've got to stand up. However, for some people, they find that a strap really helps sit the guitar in a nice way. Also, it helps you sit up straight a little bit. If you set the strap so that the uh, the strap holds the guitar just off your leg when you kind of sit up straight, it can be a good uh, thing to remind you to keep your posture good, okay? It's something we're going to talk about a little later on in the course is the importance of posture. In fact, we're going to touch on it again in a minute. But uh, yeah, getting a, a strap, it 
doesn't really matter what strap you want. If you've got a very heavy guitar, you might want a heavily padded strap so you don't get a sore shoulder. Um, although most of you would probably be tough enough to handle even the heaviest of, of guitars. So really, you just want to pick a strap that you like. That leads nicely on to item number five on the beginner's shopping list, which is strap locks. Now, once you've put your strap onto the actual strap pin, if you haven't done it right, it might fall off and you don't want to be dropping your guitar, especially if the front one drops and the headstock crashes down on the ground, it, it'll pop off. It might hurt somebody as well. It's a really, really bad idea. And I've had a guitar fall off once when I was in my teenage years. And since then, I have always used strap locks. Now, uh, there you can get straps now that have got strap locks built into them. You can buy things that you kind of screw into the end of the strap, which is what I use most of the time. Um, but you can also even just use, there's a, a little red washer that you get in Grolsch beer bottles. So you get a couple of bottles of beer, which is a great thing into itself. And you use the little red washer to put over the pin after you You've put your strap on and it solves the problem completely and it costs you a couple of beers you know that's a bit of a bargain but you can also get like a plastic alternative there are lots of different ways of doing it now um, but uh, definitely if you're going to use the strap get yourself some strap locks it could really save your instrument and i think it's a really important uh, important thing Item number six is a metronome. Now, I'm going to recommend to you the Justin Guitar Time Trainer Metronome, which is an app that you can get. It's only $1.99, dead cheap, um, and it works on iOS and on Android. It's really stable, easy to use. It's got some features that you probably won't use as a beginner, but you will find very useful slightly later on in your journey. So metronome app from Justin Guitar, links on the website again, as usual. Um, but pretty much any metronome will do, right? If you want to buy a standalone metronome, digital one, that's a great idea. I probably don't recommend getting a TikTok metronome that you have to wind up and it kind of, you know, a pendulum effect one. Um, they're just they're a bit more hassle and they're really big. But if you happen to find one in your house, I guess there's a pretty cool, kind of a, a high cool factor in using an old older metronome there. You just have to stop and wind it up every now and again. But a metronome is going to be a really, really good idea, really help your timing, help you play better. And it's something that you want to be using from fairly early doors on your guitar journey. So definitely you want to get yourself a metronome. Item number seven on the beginner shopping list is a capo or capo. You say capo, I say capo. And basically it's a little thing usually made of metal that goes on the guitar neck and means that instead of playing the open chords down here, you can play the same chord shapes further up the neck and they sound higher. Now, what they're really great for for beginners is being able to play along with the original recordings where you only have limited chords. You know, maybe the original recordings using bar chords, which is where one of your fingers is covering all of the strings, which are definitely too hard for a beginner. But by using a capo or capo, uh, it covers all the strings and you can use nice, easy, beginner friendly shapes. OK, that's the best thing about using the capo. But they're also good if you want to sing along and a song's too low, you can start moving the capo further up the fingerboard and find the key that's good for your voice. So capo is really, really super effective little tool, not very expensive. Again, see the website for my recommended capos. There's quite a few different ones available now. So uh, you definitely want to get yourself a capo right at the beginning of your journey. Item number eight on the beginner's shopping list is a music stand. Now, for some of you, this kind of won't be relevant because if you're, especially if you're playing off of a computer all the time, the computer's going to be in front of you. But when I was learning guitar, I mostly learned from books and I spent a lot of the time sitting on the edge of the bed. And if you've got a book and you're sitting on the edge of the bed, you're looking like this and it's really bad for your posture, okay? Because your spine is twisted right around and you're craning your neck at the same time. It's a surefire way to have back problems, right? It's, it's just, it's not a good idea. You know, my partner's an osteopath, so she lectures me all the time if I'm sitting badly and, and I just see, you know, in hindsight that my posture must have been terrible all the time. You know, you don't want to be doing this either. We're going to, I'll be giving you a big lecture about, uh, you know, the importance of your posture when you're playing a little later on. But you don't want to be hunching like that. And you definitely don't want to be doing this twisting, craning thing to be looking at something that's beside you, whatever, it's a book or whatever, your computer. So do try and if you're using a computer, sit at a table so you're looking straight ahead of yourself. You don't want to be craning. And if you're using pa paper and pens or whatever, then you definitely want to get yourself a little music stand. You can get a wire one relatively cheap. Um, I use a very cool one called a rat stand, um, but they're, you know, 
far too expensive i would have thought for a beginner but they look really cool and for me in the studio it's kind of a, a useful thing not that you can see it in shot there but it's right down in front of me it has been for probably almost every video i've ever done i think old rat stand's been around but anyway item number nine on the beginner's shopping list again is one of those ones that might be a little bit redundant now i might be showing my age but it's a, some kind of ring binder or fault clear display folder for you to keep your notes in now you could replace this maybe with a folder on your computer where you're going to keep all your notes but the thing that you don't want is to have all of your stuff scattered all over the place so when you sit down to practice you want the things that you're working on to be in one place okay i think that's really important you know and uh, even for the songbooks and stuff i think it's a good idea to copy out the songs that you're learning so that the ones that you've done are in one particular place so you've got a you know i'd always recommended to my students they had a repertoire folder okay and they'd have all of the songs that they knew really well at the front and all of the ones that they were learning at the back you know and the idea was to try and get the ones from the back to the front of the book you know and then you, you know if you're jamming with your friends or whatever you've got a book and you go here's the songs that i know and they can flick through and find some that they know as well you know, I think having some sort of little songbooky folder is a really good idea and you can use it for keeping other lesson notes in and making your own notes I think is a really good idea. Remember that when you're learning something, if you make notes yourself in a way that you understand it, it'll help you remember and it'll help you gain a deeper understanding of it than just by listening to me once and then trying to remember. You know, I talk a lot, you know, as you probably noticed in this lesson. So I think it's worth, you know, making some of the notes. So otherwise, a lot of stuff's just going to wash over and you might miss out on some little details but that might make a difference on your journey uh, later on. And item number 10 on the beginner shopping list is something that you can't buy. It is a jam buddy, a friend who's also going to learn guitar along with you. Now, music is one of those things that's best shared. And if you can find somebody else who's learning guitar at the same time as you, it can be an amazing thing to make that journey together. You know, you'll be able to help and support each other, play songs together, work on rhythm together. Uh, somebody can play rhythm while the other person learns their lead guitar part. You can do ear training. There's loads of things that you can do with a jam buddy. So if you can, see if you can find somebody around local to you who can come over maybe once a week or whatever and play music together and talk about what you're learning and help each other you know it's it's a really it's a special thing if you can share music so see if you can do it it might not be possible for you but that would be the final thing so along with your guitar you should now know all of the things that you need to start your guitar journey so it's time to get going i'll see you for another lesson very very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye